Good evening to everyone, and thank you for uh, joining this, uh, making the time to uh, watch the speech. Uh, my name is Shehab Shenouda, and I guess you've uh, seen uh, my bio uh, on the website, so I'm not going to take your time on that uh, today. And I am, uh, as you have seen, I'm, I head up the uh, methods and controls function at Oroscon Construction. And today I'm here to speak about the challenges of BIM implementation, uh, taking some of our unique mega and special function building projects. The first slide represents really uh, the different stages where we have applied uh, BIM in different projects and unique designs. Uh, the, the, the presentation will be available online, so if you would like to take a closer look at that, uh, I will not uh, spend too much of your time on that. You're welcome to review it at your own uh, convenience later. However, I will get into the unique uh, projects that Oroscom has uh, obviously constructed and uh, implemented the BIM uh, modeling technology within and the challenges really we have faced with that. First, uh, I would like to start with the Grand Egyptian Museum. It's located in the pyramids as you can see in the picture. Well, uh, these are just snapshots of uh, how it looks from the inside, some mostly renderings, but uh, the reality now is much closer to uh, what, you, what the renderings you can see. Well, uh, if we go to the challenges of this, pro of this uh, unique structure, first of all, the structural design was a unique structural design with certain architectural pointing to the pyramids. So that uh, BIM helped with the uh, structural design there because each slab in the roof uh, had, a, had a unique geometry. And had we not used BIM on that, that would have been difficult to, uh, to construct. Again, uh, challenges included a uh, lot of coordination between many different, not just your regular trades, but you have artifacts and very specific pieces of artifacts which kept evolving over time. I mean, the, uh, the choice was not available uh, in day one, so it kept evolving over time. And every piece of artifact has it is uh, certain, well, obviously, uh, exposure uh, from uh, 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 the, uh, the atmosphere that needs to be stored in. So all of these intricate systems obviously fall back in terms of utilities and, uh, and coordination. And that all had to be incorporated into the model. So obviously, there were a lot of design changes as the project uh, life cycle developed. And uh, these had to be kept in the model, updated uh, constantly. And that uh, represented a uh, challenge both in the construction and in the BIM implementation. Now I can go on uh, if I have time about the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum, but these were the mainly the, the, the main systems, including of course, very specific uh, security uh, systems that needed to go in place and uh, all of the cable and the cable routes that have to go with that. Uh, another, uh, you know, representative project was the Greater Cairo Metro, uh, where uh, the challenge is there. Obviously, uh, we are working in an urban area which is already developed, very congested site conditions. Uh, we have a lot of structural elements which need to be coordinated together and they come up in different stages. And these uh, sometimes we had to, we were using the 4D uh, technology uh, to simulate the construction because there were obstacles obviously with the congestion and the, and the moving all the different moving parts. Now with the, a typical transportation project, you have uh, different uh, four or five different systems coming together uh, in place uh, between the power, the signaling, and uh, uh, the, the public areas uh, serves all of these. So naturally, the uh, modeling helps to, to streamline this effort early on. Obviously, 
as I mentioned in the beginning, the construction methodology was given much thought uh, before we start construction, especially in an, again in a congested area where you, uh, you really don't have uh, much uh, choice to do uh, everything twice. You need to get it right the first time around. Moving on, we have uh, another representative project, which is a hotel called El Mesa at Alamein, uh, where it is, uh, as you can see, it's a lot of rooms. The public areas and the utilities were very congested. This is uh, number one. Uh, number two, you have constant de design development because uh, operators come in, uh, 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 certain architects come in and they have a different thought for different areas, public areas, whether they are public or VIP. So uh, you have to, uh, construction wise, you have to match up with all of this and keeping up uh, with all of this to serve the utilities to serve the areas in the model needed to go in tandem with that. And that was a challenge, uh, both in construction and to update the model. Uh, and another uh, really iconic uh, project was the new opera house in uh, Cairo, which is still under construction, uh, uh, whereby uh, inside the, uh, the opera house and the main hall, you have a lot of unique systems, whether it is moving parts or uh, acoustics, uh, which have to be all studied together and take their space and take their time uh, serviceability of the uh, of the lighting fixtures and the, all of the moving areas needs to be taken into consideration and modeling helped with that to keep uh, all of this coordinated in a very confined space into consideration so again the challenges with the construction and naturally uh, with the BIM model was uh, to coordinate between all of the disciplines and the special moving mechanisms audio video lighting uh, and uh, the very stringent acoustical and audiovisual requirements have all to be taken into consideration when doing the design and obviously implementing the model. Uh, another uh, representative project we have is the uh, Capital Stadium, uh, which involves design build approach. As you can see, it's a unique structure. Uh, in terms of structural design. And from day one, this was taken into consideration of the model, whereby uh, the design, uh, uh, design build fast track approach had to be adapted as you go along in the model. Uh, you have, we are always studying faster delivery and erection methods, whether it is of these structural elements or precast units or the, the very uh, strict uh, uh, tolerances on the design of the uh, pre-stressed pre units. So all of these, uh, uh, the BIM modeling helped us to, to refigure these early on. Uh, we taken into consideration in the fabrication and delivery and obviously the erection of the product. Another uh, industrial, uh, industrial type project uh, typical industrial was a water uh, sewage treatment plant, I'm sorry, in the man, uh, Saudi Arabia, whereby, again, it is a fast track design. Uh, also, we have to serve uh, the integration of the data through all the project stages, all the way up to facility management. So this all has to be taken into consideration in the design and obviously in the modeling, which help also convey graphically to the client what he needs to be doing in terms of operation of the plant later on. So uh, I've just taken the time to walk you through uh, representative projects. Now comes the question uh, because of, uh, application of them out of all of our previous experiences as I've briefly mentioned through uh, is uh, there are a lot of challenges to it. So if you want to take, let's say the benefits of them, yes, it is beneficial. Uh, as you know, the generic term would be uh, with transparency, coordination to avoid rework and thus help the environment. You can get applications where you can get real-time data update. You can get uh, obviously your, your proper visual marketing aids. It helps you with that and it is real-time linked to the project. 
So as mentioned, there's a lot of challenges which you need to take into consideration with implementing uh, BIM. Well, uh, as you know, human nature is resistant to change. And uh, to many people who are uh, interacting with BIM, not necessarily uh, software users, but the people who are taking stuff in or out, to them it's an added step. Uh, you have to everything, instead of just going directly to the sketch, you have to enter it on the model. So uh, it's an added step. Yes, it is an added step indeed. However, at the, at the end, it, is, uh, it helps better coordination, more cost efficiency, but difficult for, uh, for non-users to realize this benefit uh, upfront until they either see the model or see the type of clash they could have avoided. So that takes some uh, experience. Uh, of course, in order to, to have a proper and efficient implementation of BIM, there are uh, increased upfront costs in terms of software training and hardware to make it efficient. Because usually, if you are applying BIM, you might as well inter, uh, interact with people from different geographical uh, locations, especially these days with the uh, with the pandemic, uh, many people are working from uh, from their own homes, so it's much beneficial to have everybody interact, and that involves uh, quite a, an expensive infrastructure. So again, this is an increased upfront cost, where the benefit down the line is not necessarily clear to everybody who's in, involved. Uh, many uh, people who interact with BIM see it as a more of a visual aid rather than really uh, applying, uh, the, applying the technology for better coordination, saving costs in the environment. I mean, I get a lot of uh, calls that uh, uh, use BIM to make a, a rendering or a movie for me. Well, that's not really what it's for. It's for better uh, coordination and uh, taking that further into different other applications, uh, such as uh, uh, 4D and uh, facility management or uh, something of the sort. Um, again, uh, the contractual uh, relationship uh, between the parties when it involves BIM is still in the development phase. So, i.e., a lot of the expectations behind what the BIM can uh, deliver or is deliverable of BIM is not very clear in the specifications or the contractual guidelines in a lot of instances, and that creates a lot of uh, friction, and that's another uh, challenge which uh, really might sometimes hinder the construction rather than, uh, than help it, if not well understood. Uh, again, uh, B uh, BIM software, the different software is not about the user. Uh, the user needs to be proficient, but behind the user uh, technically qualified personnel who understand the technicalities need to back up that. It's not a matter of just giving it all to a software user who, who can just uh, doesn't realize the effect of what he is modeling on the ultimate benefit. The technical uh, team need to be uh, closely involved with that so that you get the desired outcome. Now, a lot of times we expect them to do a lot of things uh, whether it is a, a bill of quantity uh, or even may do the invoice quantity takeoff or take it to the level of uh, facility management or beyond. Uh, well, that takes, if you want to, to get to there, the, the, the initial step of uh, well defining and mapping the elements to the activities, whether BOQ items or whatever it is that's going to be in the facility management software, needs to be well defined in the beginning. And that takes a lot of, again, upfront investment, which a lot of time uh, people do not, uh, or let's say project managers or construction managers don't see the, the, uh, the benefit of that in the beginning and they'd rather just continue with the conventional way instead of starting a whole new uh, system which they don't see the, the downstream value in the end uh, for. So I hope I have uh, in these uh, few minutes ha uh, highlighted the Oroscom experience with the implementation of the BIM modeling uh, in different unique projects and highlighted uh, the challenges uh, we have faced and we are constantly facing and the learning curve it takes to effectively uh, uh, implement uh, this uh, modeling in order to get true benefit out of 
uh, this software. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you.